How's it going guys? So I'm back in the reptile room again and today we're going to try to lay some vinyl background inside of the hopping mouse enclosure. But I've got a few things to do first to get it all prepped. So things have been an absolute madhouse here in this last push to get a whole bunch of stuff done before Bubs turns up. And I've got my monitor corner finished, essentially. I'm still waiting for my last monitor to go into the Kimberley habitat up there, which will be really cool when that does come into fruition. But in saying that, I want to kind of just let that cure for a little bit before I actually put her in. And we're going to get started on the hopping mouse one. And uh, to do so, I have to actually pull the whole thing apart, give it a thorough clean, potentially even pull the tank out. That might make my life a little easier. But yeah, I'm gonna have to get all of the sand out and everything done there. These little guys, these guys are super destructive. I'm hoping that they're not gonna damage this vinyl. But I've had a background printed for these guys now with a whole bunch of spin effects in it, which will look really cool, I think, once it's laid in there. I'm gonna to have to use a little bit of a different technique to lay this vinyl too, because it's kind of got like an, an anti-bubble type coating thing in there because it's a higher quality vinyl and I can't use water and all sorts. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But essentially, I have to pull this whole thing apart, get into it, get these mice out, put them into something temporary, and yeah, pretty much pull this enclosure apart and give it a good solid clean. You can see why I wanna do this background. Essentially, they've, they've just destroyed what's left of the uh, blue background there. Well, that's not really them. That's just, you know, stuff getting pushed up against it and and that kind of flaking off. So anyway, we're going to go straight over the top of that, give it a thorough clean, get this background into place, and uh, yeah, basically just check out the mice on the way. So here's a bit of a quick look at this one. This one's not on aluminium board, so I decided to try to cut some costs if possible and try to lay it in myself. But essentially, it's a few rolls of vinyl. There's a couple of side pieces that are inside there that are cut as well. Um, but what we're going to try to do is lay this in straight over the cruddy paint job that I've done and hopefully it'll stick. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it'll be nice and spin effecty the whole way around and hopefully give these guys a bit of a nice backdrop. I don't know which video is going to be coming out first, whether it's going to be these monitor builds or whether it's going to be the hopping mouse build. But I'm absolutely digging these backgrounds or backdrops. That's kind of like a back a backing, you know, that's all they are at the end of the day. They're just photos, but they're my photos that I've taken, which makes it all more, all the more nostalgic for me and takes me right back to where we were when we took these photos. But um, yeah, it'll be cool to take this one with the hopping mice. I'm really digging the, digging the Kimberly one though. I think it's because I had to put in all that extra work to do that rock work and get it all together and kind of try to match it into the actual background itself. Enough jibber jabber from me, let's get stuck in. When I originally put this enclosure together with all the PVC pipe, I used a whole bunch of those big granite stones to kind of hold the PVC into a place and also just to kind of hide the PVC. And you know what, it just didn't work. But this is what the hobby's all about at the end of the day. We've got to be able to try things. We've got to be able to push boundaries. We've got to be able to see what works for what animals, what's going to work with our sort of cleaning regime and all that sort of gear. And this is what it's all about. So I trialed it, I didn't like it, so I decided to change it up. The sand was actually pretty fresh in the enclosure, so I decided to reuse it. I got really lucky here. I managed to actually pick up the PVC pipe with most of the mice actually inside of it. So that made catching them very easy. And I just had to get the last kind of few that were just remaining in the enclosure. These guys don't particularly like handling. They don't mind like a little scratch on the head or something like that, but they don't really like being picked up. So that's why I try to coax them into a big plastic container, just to minimize stress on the actual animal itself.
Whilst I was cleaning the enclosure, I decided it was probably going to be way easier to actually pull the enclosure out and pull the roof off it. Five screws is all that it took, seeing this enclosure doesn't really have to hold any weight on top of it. And uh, yeah, decided I'd just move it all out of the way and that'd make life a lot easier, not only cleaning it, but also laying the vinyl. It was at this point that I actually discovered that the paint was coming off pretty easily, hence why it must have been chipping in the enclosure originally. So that's why I decided to take a razor blade to it and get all this acrylic paint off, because it might actually make this vinyl stick to it a lot longer. It did make my job a hell of a lot messier, but you know what? whole bunch of F10 and all sorts just to kind of wipe it all down and get it out of there. You know, it took me probably an extra half an hour or so, but at the end of the day, if it's going to make it last long, I'm down for it. I laid out the vinyl in an order so I could actually make sure that I'm putting it in the right place because the last thing I'd want to do is stick the wrong panel in the wrong spot. I decided to just start with one of the smaller panels first. I haven't used this particular type of vinyl without, you know, th this vinyl's kind of got like a bubble, uh, bubble crease, so to speak, in the back of it. So it actually allows you to kind of channel all the air and everything out. And apparently you can't use water or any sort of moisture or anything like that behind this, otherwise it doesn't stick properly. So with that in mind, I decided I'd practice on the smaller panel and go from there and then uh, take on the next panel, which is the big panel next and try to lay that into place. This one was a little bit more difficult because of the size of it. I managed to get my wife in to kind of give me a bit of a hand just to hold it up while I got it started. But once I got it started, it was the same as a small panel. You know, just working bit by bit, slowly and surely, I got through it. Eduardo at Beyond Printing had allowed kind of like a five mil uh, excess around each edge of the, the background. So that's why you see me actually trimming it up and trimming it to size. And it's good because it means that I got a really nice tight fit. There was kind of like no gaps or anything like that in it. And it made it look really, really seamless. And then it was just a matter of putting everything back together and back into place and getting the mice back into the enclosure. One adjustment that I did actually make is I did actually make the water bottle hang a little lower on this particular upright branch slash tree trunk. Um, the reason for that is basically I'm not going to have as much substrate in there for them to kick around because of the rocks that were in there before that kind of bulked up the substrate. So having the water bottle lower means that they're going to get a good thorough drink rather than trying to stretch out and not being able to reach that dripper bottle. These little spinifex hopping mice have grown on me so much over the past few months. They're probably one of the animals in the, in the house that I actually will sit down and watch for a good hour and just let myself relax. Because these little guys are so interesting, and especially when you do have a little colony of them and you watch the behavior amongst all of them. It's, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's just something else that I'm getting out of having these little native mammals as pets. While I was putting everything back together, I decided to give the sand one last good sieve, just to kind of really freshen it up for these little guys and get any remaining granite or anything out of this sand. Something these little guys always go bonkers for is a whole bunch of fresh twigs and leaf litter. They just love foraging through it, gnawing at it all, pulling it into the logs and using it as nesting material. They go absolutely nuts for it. Thank you. 
It's crazy how something so simple as adding one of these photo vinyl backgrounds into an enclosure just makes it that next level. You know, at the end of the day, it is still just a box. That's all it is. But by having a photo printed on the back, it just makes it look actually a bit more like a real habitat. It's so good for me to be able to take these photos from my trips and be able to bring them home and actually give them some good use. You know, I was just taking habitat photos for the sake of taking habitat photos and all of a sudden this idea came to me and yeah, I just thought that I'd, I'd give it a go, you know, what's the harm in it really? Um, you know, I just decided that, you know, I wanted to kind of make it look nice in my room, not just a bunch of boxes. I wanted to make it look like a real display, almost like my own little private zoo that I get to look after and enjoy every day. That's the way that I'm kind of taking it as. And you know, there's no reason why you guys can't do this at home either. You know, you just got to be able to think outside the box, so to speak, and you can always make little improvements for your own animals. A fresh home always calls for a bit of a feast. So on the menu tonight, these guys got a whole bunch of spinach leaves and they also got some crushed peanuts to boot. I swear these little guys eat better than me most of the time. Well guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and this very sort of like moderate upgrade, if anything, to this enclosure. It definitely gives it a bit of color, a bit of pop, and I really do prefer it to that bright blue background. It was really easy to take off actually with that razor blade, and this was really easy to lay down this vinyl, so yeah, very stoked with how it's come out. It looks unreal. I think I'll get a couple more hollow logs for these guys to, to, to nest into and stuff. But um, I, I may or may not incorporate the PVC pipe again. It was a bit of a pain to hide. So maybe if I find out a way of how to hide it. And if you guys have got any ideas, I'm, I'm keen to hear it. Um, but for now, all of the mice fit in half that hollow log at the back there anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. But I'll, I'll find them a couple more hollows. Very basic enclosure. As you saw, you know, I dropped that water bottle down and I just put this log underneath it as well just to make sure that they can get up to it and, and really have a good thorough drink. Um, but yeah, I'm really stoked with this and these guys seem to be pretty happy exploring this little enclosure. Alrighty guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you do like seeing this sort of content. Don't forget to actually like the video and uh, drop it a comment below if you want to see some more sort of stuff like this. Glad you really stuck around and saw these little guys in closure come together. Another one where I've taken a photo out of the bush and uh, yeah, been able to throw it into my my reptile room here and slash <laughs> Spinifex Hopping Mouse room. Um, yeah, I'm uh, really bringing the Northern Territory home with me now, I reckon. <laughs> Alrighty guys, take care of yourselves and I'll catch you on the next video. Take it easy.